It's often exhilarating when you discover something new for the first time, essentially out of the blue. And in the world of precious metals, it's always exciting when I hear about new folks realizing the true value of these metals. But for those of us who maybe have been paying attention to the precious metal markets for any number of years, it's even more eye-opening when you take existing data and you can calculate it in such a way that opens your eyes even more. And what I'm about to share with you blew my mind when I discovered it. I'll explain in this video as we explore. There's always something new to learn, even for those who feel like they are learned. Of course, I know for myself, there's still a lot for me to learn. There's a lot I don't know. The more you know, the more you realize you don't know. And this is one of those cases. Remember the community gave me an idea to look into the ratios between gold and silver. Now you've heard me talk about the gold to silver ratio for a long time, but when we think about that, the first thing that comes to mind is the price ratio between gold and silver. Now I can't tell you how many times people make the comparison between the mining ratio or the abundance of gold and silver above ground compared to what is uh, below ground and compare that to the price ratio. But I'm gonna do something a little bit different here because when we look at those numbers, in fact, those numbers can vary greatly because you know, there's really not a, uh, a reliable source, uh, well, at least one that can give us an idea of how much existing above ground stocks of gold there is to silver. But some say that number is anywhere between a range of 20 to one to 15 to one, somewhere thereabouts, which is fairly close to the amount of silver that is uh, known to be in reserves below the Earth's crust. Now, when you take that compared to the mining ratio, it is much more narrow. But, and that, and that is between seven and nine to one. And so what does that have to do with the price ratio? Well, that's just it, nothing. They're mutually exclusive. And, uh, that, and that's something that I like to educate folks about that watch these videos to, so they understand that the price ratio has nothing to do with the natural ratios uh, that I'm discussing, and that is the above ground stocks, mining ratios, and what is below ground. Those are three different numbers from the natural existence of gold and silver above and below the Earth's crust. Um, and the reason why that's important to understand is because rarity is essentially what that points to does not equate to price discovery. And price discovery is another matter because that involves psychology, the psychology of the markets and the interpretation of rarity and demand. Rarity and demand are also two mutually exclusive things. What is the biggest driver for uh, the price of any commodity or anything really, whether it be existing or not? In other words, Bitcoin has value because of its rarity. Uh, of no more than 21 million of them will be ever produced, but you can't see or touch Bitcoin. It has really no intrinsic value, but it has demand because of that rarity and because of the, the market places value on it. But what about gold and silver? You know, it's a, it's, it comes out of the ground uh, at a rarity compared to each other. And, and really gold and silver are much more rare than the more common metals that have these wide uses, anywhere from copper, nickel, lead, iron, zinc, and so forth. Uh, but they have a price, a discovery that's about them, but what the market says they are. And, and a lot of it has to do with the demand. Uh, although there are other factors that come into play as well too. So that's where this discussion leads as to what about these other ratios. There's another ratio to look at. And really, it's, it's a ratio that is uh, entrenched inside of another ratio. So in order to understand this, we're going to look at three different numbers here that I think is going to blow your mind here. So follow me, because we're talking about the rarity of two different commodities. The dollar, that's right, this, this is the dollar that is a... Uh, printed uh, year over year, that's called the M2 money supply. And then we're gonna be talking about how much silver and how much gold is mined per year in comparison to that dollar. 
And let's talk about what that ratio is now. I have a playlist called uh, Silver in the Debt Clock, and this is where we get these numbers from, but they do provide sources. So the dollar to silver ratio right now is increasing. It's increasing. In fact, it's been increasing here for a while, and we're seeing it now at 165 of these, whether it be in digital form or in paper form, that are printed per year in comparison to a, a single ounce of silver that is mined per year around the world. So it's the year-over-year -year increase of the dollar compared to the yearly world production of silver, this metal there. Now, that's the dollar-to-silver ratio right now. The dollar-to-gold ratio right now is 1,207 of these that have been printed or digitized year-over-year -year based off of the what's known as the M2 money supply in comparison to the amount of gold that is mined per year uh, around the world globally. So that gives you an idea, $1,207 as, as I record this video. So that is, those are the two ratios. Now when you take those numbers and you divide them and uh, you look at the ratio between the dollar to gold ratio compared to the dollar to silver ratio, well then it gives an eye-opening number because that number is 7.3 to 1, which is really close to the mining ratio, how much is mined um, between these two metals per year. But those numbers are pretty big. Well, the dollar to silver ratio, uh, there's a many numbers uh, of dollars for every ounce, which certainly does not equate to the price of silver right now. That price, the price of silver is around $30 an ounce. That leads one to believe that maybe perhaps silver is undervalued if you compare those two ratios, which I'm not necessarily saying you should, but nonetheless, it's an interesting concept and one can make that inference, at least to some level in some degree, which means there's a lot of derivatives for silver. What about the dollar to gold ratio right now? Much lower than the spot price for gold which is sitting around $3,300 an ounce thereabouts. $1,207 per ounce is the dollar to gold ratio, which narrows, which maybe that means one can make an inference that gold is overvalued compared to silver because that ratio is 7.3 to one right now. Now this is really gonna blow your mind when I tell you these other numbers I mean, that's just, when you think about it, just that the fact that it goes almost right directly to the mining ratio, how much is mined between these two metals each year, that is a strange coincidence, I think. I think it's kind of eye-opening. It really kind of blows my mind, just that alone. But wait till we hear about what it is for other ratios when you span that dollar to silver ratio out and the dollar to gold ratio out five years. The numbers grow intently between the two. The dollar to silver ratio over the course of five years is 1,558 of these paper notes or, uh, well, cotton linen fiber notes for every ounce of, of silver mined per year. 1,558. The dollar to gold ratio over five years is, is 12,599 of these uh, that have been printed over the course of five years for every ounce of gold mined uh, every five years. Uh, and those are both very, very high numbers and much more than spot price, obviously. But when you divide those numbers and then you're gonna get a shocking number, it is increased only slightly between the ratio between those two. For five years, that ratio is 8.1 to one between those ratios which is still very close and within what the mining ratio is between the two. Now, this is where it gets very interesting because now we're gonna span it out 10 years, 10 years now. And when you do that, those numbers uh, change. They're a little bit less than what they were, but over the course of 10 years, from 2014 to 2024, the dollar to silver ratio is $1,121 per ounce. The dollar to gold ratio over the past 10 years is $9,329. So those numbers, the ratio equates to 8.3 to one. 
That's the paper ratio over the course of 10 years. Very much in line with the five year and even really the seven or even the one year. Um, so that is pretty remarkable, I think, to see that kind of uh, ratio pan out and fall really dramatically in line with the gold to silver ratio uh, that is mined out of the ground year over year. It's pretty remarkable, I think, pretty eye-opening. What can you infer from that? Well, when we compare it to the price ratio, the price ratio between the two metals, as I record this video, is about 76 to 1. And that, I think, leads to what most of us have agreed with for a long time, is that the price ratio is really out of whack from the normal, from what should be the normal based off of what is what the paper, what the derivatives market. How is it that the derivatives market is more in line with the mining ratio than the out of whack gold to silver ratio that uh, based off of price? It seems crazy. I don't know. Is it a coincidence? I don't know. It blows my mind to see that discovery when I did the math on this, but I thought it was quite intriguing. Now, does this change the fundamentals or the calculus of how you should stack? I don't think so. Uh, you know, should the gold to silver ratio be near where the mining ratio is? I don't think so either. In the most extreme examples of the price uh, movements, uh, we have seen it go down to about 17 to 1 in 1980 at the peak. Um, and we've seen, uh, uh, you know, the, or, the, or the narrowest between the, at the peak prices in 1980, about 17, somewhere thereabouts. In 2011, it was around 32 to 1. I think those are extreme circumstances. During the Roman Empire, it was, it was at 12 to 1. And when we saw one that was fixed, it was about 15 to 1. And on the other end of the spectrum, in 2020, it peaked to about 126 to 1 between the gold to silver ratio. It's insanity. So just something to think about. Uh, you know, uh, it may not be a bad idea, I think, to have a little bit more silver to think about, you know, uh, your gold to silver, your personal gold to silver ratio, for sure. And it should encourage silver stackers out there because it is intriguing to see that line up in the way that it did. But uh, fascinating indeed. And uh, thanks again to the, this community for giving me ideas and to, to research, to find and discover some of these data to bring to you. Let me know what your thoughts are. If you enjoyed content like this, I like to think out of the box on this channel. I hope you will consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already and pressing that like button down below if you find value in the content I provide here. And with that, I would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to each and every one of you for taking the time to watch. And I want to encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.